looks like I'm on live just so I'm not sitting here for the first couple of minutes <laughs> not saying anything for the pre record I'm a, the playback um got one watching hello whoever's in the chat I picked up some things we didn't expect to go to an estate sale today of course I'm dressed like a farmer over here because I was supposed to be doing yard work started raining as we headed to um, to the hardware store and stuff so as we were leaving the subdivision we saw an estate sale sign and hi Sandra and uh, of course we can't not look so we went up there and looked and we did find some things today so I wanted to get on here and since I haven't had a haul in a while besides what I've been buying from other jewelry resellers um, I wanted to share what I found today and something pretty interesting that I'm wearing now that I didn't even know what it was, but I knew it was made out of sterling. So I picked it up and I'll tell you a little bit about that um, when we get some more people in here. How are you doing today, Sandra? I know I just set up the video, so most people haven't had time to get their notification. Try to pull this back up so that we can... I can show you the one that I found that looks like these. Three watching. Hello, who else is out there? Don't be a lurker. Say hello. There it is. Let me check and see if anybody else got my notifications. I don't know. We got four now. Good. It's rained most of the day. Ah, you're in Georgia too. I forget about that. Yeah, it's it was raining. We had like a little bit of time and I got excited and I was like, I can do some landscaping in the front yard today. Clean it up. And I told him, I said, we've been talking about getting one of those um, tag along. You know, you attach it to your riding lawnmower. Hey, Sandra Conco. And um, this, uh, you can tote stuff. And I was going to bring some logs up front and go around the border with some logs and, uh, you know, weed that area and then maybe take some of my herbs and plants from my garden in the back and break them up and spread them around kind of on a budget um, landscaping that I was going to do because it looks kind of like a jungle up there in that front area. All right, well, we've got six watch. Hey, Jennifer. So I hit a state sale today and I did find some jewelry items. Um, a hat. I got a sewing book. All their books were a dollar. So it's McCall's sewing book. I didn't look it up for resale. Um, not yet, anyway. I figured I'd see if it was useful to me for a dollar. And somebody received it for Christmas in 1970. So it's vintage. I can list it on Etsy if I don't find it useful and I can't, you know, do anything with it. But I plan on, I bought a pattern for those memory bears, the little teddy bears that you can make. And I want to try my hand at making my teddy bears and listing those. Hi, Kimmy. And, uh, you know, maybe this will help. I, know, I have basic you know skills because I did take home egg. So I did learn how to make a stuffed animal and a pair of boxer shorts and a pillow and stuff like that. Hi Angie. And uh, so I'm going to try that. I'm try that just using scrap uh, clothing. Say if it if it's something I really like the pattern of the shirt or something like that and maybe it doesn't sell in my store. I'm thinking um, why not just take it down if it doesn't sell and cut it up and make something out of it. Since I paid for it anyway, I thought about that. I got a um, silver polishing cloth for a dollar. So that was cool. I got that. And I found a vintage Atlanta Braves hat for $2. I'm a Braves fan. That's about the only sport that I care anything about is baseball. <laughs> and uh, I fly my little Braves flag in the front. But this is a snapback. 
just got some like cobweb or something on it. And uh, if it was worn, it was barely worn. And I know it's vintage because it's a new error. If you do buy caps and stuff and you know anything about it, um, this is an old one. This is a vintage uh, new air tag. So I picked that up and uh, made in Dominican Republic and then genuine merchandise. So, yep, I'll be listing this one on Etsy and Poshmark and maybe even eBay because I think I'm going to start doing a few listings again on eBay. Um, okay, so here's one of the interesting items. I, I found two of them. And they had some of the rings too. And I kind of felt like I knew what the rings were about, but I didn't really know if these were supposed to be some kind of like slave bracelet or, you know, what it was. So I was like, it's sterling silver. So I'm going to buy it regardless because they were only um, $6 a piece. They were $6 a piece. And they're a size 10 ring. So they fit my thumb perfectly and I can wear them. But they're not just for looks. These are called um, thumb splints. And this company here, it's called Cirrus Stable Thumb Splint. And that's what they're for. And they're made out of sterling. It says on their website that they're silver. And these run $204 a piece. I paid $6 a piece for them. And I have problems with my thumbs all the time because I'm always texting and stuff like that. But also I used to have a job where I rode, I drove a tugger and we used to have to push it, the button to make it go like this and hold it down for long periods of time until I started to get, I guess like trigger thumb or whatever it's called. It was bothering me. It was inflamed and stuff. So I'm just going to slap these babies on. I'm going to get the, I'm going to have to take out some of the links and adjust that to keep it tight around my wrist. That's a little bit bigger than my wrist, but yeah, I got two of them for $12 and that's $400 worth of help for your thumbs. <laughs> but that's, that's something to keep a lookout on. Like this is something I knew nothing about, had no idea. Um, I may go back tomorrow, the, tomorrow after 12, they're going to do their half half off and if the rings are still there they're sterling silver too they go they're like split like this and they go right to where they'll be here and here and your knuckle in the middle will be open so you can move it but it's for you know like arthritis and joint problems and stuff like that i did too but you could totally like if i were to sell them um i'd list them for what they're used for but i'd also put them probably under like cosplay or something like that because I told Tyrone I was like I feel like some kind of ninja or something <laughs> with these on and there's other ways to wear them like you can put them on like that and put it on that finger and attach it you could do little different things with it hey Barbara Lynn Adam joined us too I have a couple for my middle fingers when the, when they used to dislocate a bunch Cool. I see this is a new one for me. So when we're looking through looking at jewelry and stuff, um, I mean these are these are money here to flip if you can get them cheap like that. So you can list them for multiple different reasons. Hey Darlene, I, I missed saying hey to you when you came in. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got got a frog in my throat. Peyton here. Hey, Peyton. Hey, all bling them out. Yeah, you could. CC, you definitely could. You could, some enameling would be fun to do on there. Maybe give them like mermaid skin because they do have a texture to them. Do something like that. I've been working on some, uh, y'all watch me on um, Instagram. I've been working on some uh, jewelry I'm making and stuff. And I made like this little mermaid charm necklace and some matching earrings and stuff okay so on to some more fun things i spent 85 dollars on everything that you will see i found two pairs of the really cool vintage glasses and they were still had a case this one's case it's got corduroy on the inside and it it's good in good condition this one is from paris illinois and their doctor 
looks like shit tick, but there you go. <laughs> but was established in 1905, and these should be from, you know, the early 19. I paid eight dollars a piece for them. That's what that sticker is that I'm pulling off. They are bifocals, but they're the gold field frames with the cool etching. You see the design and everything on there. And they've got those like wrap wires that go behind your. Let's see, I will not be able to see anything out of this, but you tuck them back, back behind your ears. Don't look like a old lady, like a grandma. I don't know. But there's that pair, and there's another pair, and they're both gold filled. Best I could read. I'm going to use my loop real quick. Be careful with your C's and S's. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm southern. I can't I can't fix it. Really? Okay, awesome, Peyton. I won't scrap them though. I'll list them like this if I I have a third pair that I had found before um in that watch winding cabinet that I that I bought. Yeah. Uh one tenth twelve karat gold field. They're always usually signed right here and on the inside of the earpiece too yeah it says the same thing i don't see any kind of designer name or anything like that there's a little mark that i can't really make out but yeah there is texture design really art deco-y kind of looking to the design on it so that's one pair, and the other pair was in this case that's not so great, but still it has a case. So take that $8 sticker off of this one. Hey, Cindy. You saw my message. Oh, okay. Yeah, I sent you a message to let you know I was going to pop on and do a haul video real quick. We had some barbecue from a food truck. Not so great. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby. I did. I did get there, and I bought some um, like jewelry findings to finish that necklace I'm working on because I didn't have a gold cone findings to take off of any of my scrap stuff. So here's a, another pair. There's the other pair. This one, yeah, they have the bifocal in it too, but. Seems like that one probably preceded this pair because it was a little bit stronger. Yep, same thing. One tenth, twelve karat gold field. It has a cool design on it. So yep, I haven't even looked these up to see what I could ask for them. I didn't. I never listed the other pair. I wanted to keep a pair for kind of cool display. I might. Might decide between the three which one I want to keep now that I have three. But like I said, those were eight a piece. And look, Kimmy, here's my lighter. I use it too. It works. Okay, well, the fans go and it may not. Look at me, make me the liar. Anyway, I put fluid in it. It works. So <laughs> I like my little lighter. I put it on here and my tool accessories for burning like loose threads and things like that are they shorts or long you look cute in your overalls yeah yeah this was my yard work outfit vision care can replace the lenses with your prescription too i'm like yeah i i think about that the pair that i keep for myself i could do that she cindy hello oh i'm farmer april today but now this is what I do when I got to go do some yard work. I put on overalls so I can get on my knees and keep the bugs and mosquitoes away. Okay, so I'll show you my Hobby Lobby haul. How about that? I've still got more stuff though than the other one, but this came out first. So I just got some, some, uh, which I'm calls them, jump rings. And there's my gold tone ones. And then I needed these for the um, for the teddy bears. If I'm going to make teddy bears, I had to have some doll needles. So I got the doll needles. I got some uh, 
spring rings. And guys, if y'all do need jewelry making accessories, not that me and Cindy won't have you some soon. Did I buy these too? Oh, beading needles. Yeah, because I'm going to try uh, beading some necklaces as well. But um, they're having 50% off right now. So all this stuff that I got, how much did I say? Will it tell me? Everything was 50% off that I got. It only cost me $16 for all this, all this stuff that I got right here. So it would have been twice that much. But anyway, the Hobby Lobby's got a sale on, and this was clearance. I got a clearance, 65, 69 cents on those. But yeah, all this stuff also. And it's that brand too, that jewelry shop. I know she mentioned that. She was like, those are the ones that are, um, that were 50% off. So that's cool. I'm having such a blessed day. Go. Got first ever message found Miriam Haskell and was recognized from YouTube. That's awesome, Angie. Is this, are you saying it's your first time you ever found Miriam Haskell? Hey, makeup zombie. I miss my denim dresses. What, what size do you wear? Do you want one? I can. I find denim dresses all the time. The last message I had was probably 20 years ago in Vegas. What do you mean, message? <laughs> I get to talk and I look down, I'm totally lost. There's some more jewelry. I did get some other sterling items. As in relaxing on a table. Oh, a massage. A massage. I said, oh, isn't massage? Yeah, there we go, Barbara. I'm over here talking about what's a, what's a message. <laughs> I'm about loud. I think a lot of people are getting into beading. Cece gave me the beading bug. I've made a few bracelets for myself and grandkids. Awesome. I'm going to do a challenge. I want to, I've been making these bags. Y'all know how I've done before when I do my craft sales. <clears throat> when I do my craft sales, I'll make sometimes like little sets, like make it yourself bracelet and or necklace or whatever things that I feel like are cohesive and the colors, you know, coordinate well. And they would all together make a cool, you know, bracelet or necklace or whatever. Well, I'm doing that again with all this stuff, and I wanted to do a challenge where if anybody's interested, y'all can message me um, either on here or Facebook or whatever, but I wanted to send y'all one. Let's make it, um, a share it on social media, or if you're a YouTuber like this, you can share it in a video, and then I want us to list it and see what we can make from uh because i mean i have always i'm getting all this stuff except for what what i bought today excuse me from broken bits and salvage stuff from my jewelry finds and so um yeah if y'all message me that way i can make a list of who to send it out to but yeah let's see what we can make and let's uh list it and then i'll give a prize to whoever may um can make the most off of the item that they made you know, profit wise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having so much fun with it. I'll show you when I get through showing you this, I'll show you that one I made that I sh shared on Instagram. But if you're interested just under this video right here, just leave me a comment and say you're interested, but yeah, that's the requirements to receive one. You'll have to make the item and share it either in a video or social media and then list it. And then once it sells and, uh, and you you send me send in you know whatever you tell me how much it made you made for it and then I'll just keep tally of that. I know everybody won't sell it at the same time. We'll give it some time for the prize part of it. But uh, yeah, once everybody gets it back in, I might do. I don't want to do too many people. Maybe like ten people. I gotta send all that stuff out. And uh, but maybe we can get it sold. You know kind of quickly I don't know that part might not work out so well but we'll see I'd love to still see because the thing is is that I'm 
I've made earrings in the past and done little diddly things when I was younger with making jewelry, but um, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in like what my stuff looks like or whether or not aesthetically I have the eye for, for what might be popular or what, you know, what's interesting. So I'd like to see what other people come up with so that I can get an idea of, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong or I need some inspiration, something like that. Hi, Carmen. Uh, does it have to be jewelry? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's all jewelry pieces, but I guess, no, I guess not. If you don't know how to make jewelry, I, I want, like I said, I'm doing it so that I can get ideas. But um, if you don't make jewelry, but you want to participate, um, I can still send you some things. Just let me know, like, probably what you're thinking of making. So that way, you know, whatever I send in the little bag has the stuff. I think the challenge is a great idea. Thanks, Kimmy. I can do cues. Oh, yeah, you can do the phone cases that you do. Okay, so, yeah, it pretty much just anything. Yeah, that'll work. That'll totally work. Have you, do you ever, do you ever list those? Elizabeth? Oh, thanks, Barbara. I appreciate that. Okay, so this piece, um, this is a freshwater pearl, as I can assume. I mean, it's real pearls, but a lot of times I don't know how I know the difference between a freshwater and a South Sea or something. Well, those are different color, I think. But anyway, they're very well rounded, uh, have a nice um, sheen to them, per perfectly matched size, I would say. And then they have a 14 karat gold clasp. I paid $18 for it. And looking up comparisons, I mean, it could go for 100, 200, you know, whatever. So. But I may end up keeping this one as a bracelet because I can wrap that one twice. I have a sterling. I have a bunch of pearl necklaces. So what I'll probably do is say this one can go into my jewelry box, but I'll have to pull one of my sterling ones out and list it <laughs> in place of this one. OK, so maybe these are because these are really nicely round. So these would even be probably more expensive than the freshwater pearls. Yeah, they are actually, they're pretty good size. There's my pinky finger, so give you a little bit of a comparison. Don't miss anybody's comments. Okay, and then if you're familiar with the Delft Holland stuff, I pick this up because anytime I pick up De Delft stuff and I list it, it sells for me. Now, this one, when I looked it up, I don't see any Holland signed on the inside or something. So this might be a replica. I may not get the value that I thought I could, but I think I paid a dollar. So I can't go wrong. People that collect thimbles, you know, would like that. And I know it's vintage. Eight millimeter plus is more money. Yeah, I'll have to go use my caliper upstairs and check them. I'm feeling better. My husband's picking up this, this study and I'm seeing a doctor. That's good, Carmen. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, you think this is um uh, what do you call it? Not plaster. I don't know what, what that material is. Now these yeah, I think you're right, Peyton. Well, Look at that right there. You see how uneven it is, like they hand painted it. It may be hand painted, but one I saw online had Holland signed on the inside. So I'm thinking this one's just kind of a replica, but it'll still be cute for collectible, maybe listed at what, five, five dollars or something. It could be. It could be China, made out of China. You're right. It, it totally could be. It's very thin. It's very light. Yeah. Um, I found this. Now the pin back is not marked sterling. It looks like one of the Israeli carved uh, mother of pearl brooches. I love their quality from Israel. I love the quality of mother of pearl. 
that you get in the jewelry from there. And it's not signed, but that's my assumption just because of the way it looks. And I've seen signed pieces of Mother of Pearl like that. And they're always really thick and nicely carved. <clears throat> Tiny dots. Yeah, I'll have to put that under the mini magnet. Leave me alone. Yep, you're right. This little dot. Little dot. So it might be like five dollars for that or something. <clears throat> I found these Avon earrings, and I believe either me or Casey one had the matching uh necklace because I remember that design um on it. And they're about like that. They're nice. They're in real good shape. Uh these earrings were like two dollars. <clears throat> Necklaces were five dollars. Oh, this is really cool. This is a vintage necklace and these are real dried little roses in there. There's a glare on the globe, but it's got a Looks like a piece of felt or, or velvet behind it. And then it has these dried roses. And you can see the little dome of glass over it. And it's pretty. It's not signed or anything, but it's pretty. Um, here we go. This is sterling silver. It has mother of pearl and abalone shell. Pink mother of pearl, white mother of pearl, abalone shell in there. It is sand casted. For anybody that's new to jewelry or when you see the back of it and you're looking at it like that and you think, oh, well, that must be costume because the way the back's finished. Because I know a lot of costume like Chico's, that kind of stuff, sometimes we'll have that pebbled back. These are sand casted, so it leaves those little um, pits on the back of it. You do paint awesome. And it's marked M925. And it looks like little snowflakes in the back. When you see it close, you see that? Yeah. That's the way it's casted. And it is on a sterling silver um, chain. And that was $5. So I got that for $5. Um, I got two crown trafari brooches. And that's marked right there. And marked right there. And then these, I haven't tested them, but I'm pretty sure um, the backs aren't original to them, but I'm <clears throat> pretty sure that they're sterling silver. And maybe Navajo with the petty point turquoise in there. They're not real big. They're real simple, but they're pretty. And I got those for two dollars. Pretty. <clears throat> um, and then one more necklace right here. That's a multi-chain that I've obviously gotten all kinds of twisted. But it has a locket on it. It's not signed. It has that really cool big box clasp on it like that. Everything was like in real good shape. Looks like it's probably had never been worn at all. And then that had a real nice, you know, floral motif or grapes and stuff. It looks like really, yeah, little grapes or something. And then you have all those chains. So I'll pick that one up too. And that concludes the jewelry that I found at the estate. Oh no. And then I got this. Let me put the magnet on it. Let's see. It's not magnetic, but I did a little quick research on this. This is a Belgian um, metal. It's not actually a coin, it's a medallion from 1914. If you can see the date, I don't want to learn not to rub the tarnish off of coins just like with the sterling so um 1914 it's got the artist's signature on the bottom and it's um prince albert and queen elizabeth or whatever 
there. And it was a medallion. And it, and it says on here, um, generosity, American generosity, uh, and Belgium gratitude. <clears throat> because during the war, um, they needed food. So they made these coins. And I guess they were going to be sent to the U.S. Um, to raise the funds or something. I read a short, I didn't read it intensively, but somehow these were to show gratitude to the U.S. for helping with food relief and everything in their country during the war. But um, I also read that Germany um, wanted all of these melted down when they found out that they were making them. They stopped the production of them and they melted them down to use the metal um, for, you know, war needs or whatever. So there's not a, I guess they're, they're limited in a way, but I don't know how many. But um, when I looked it up, one like this was going for $45 and I paid um, $2 for it. So I'm going to put this in with my other coins sort of collection and stuff in my little uh, shelf upstairs of cool treasures. If it's Albert, it's most likely Victoria thinking England. Yeah, but when I looked it up, it said, and it says it in, in their language, it says uh, Bel Bel Belgium, Belgium is what it means. So it, it's, from, it's Belgian. That's what it says, but it does say, it does say Elizabeth and Albert there. You can read anything through the tarnish. I don't know. <laughs> it's not magnetic, but what it said online is it might be um, silver plated, like a mixture of metals, possibly. So that's why I was sticking the magnet to it. I don't really want to scratch it. I'll just do some more research and, and find out if, if any of these were pure silver. I guess it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense if they were financially burdened for them to make it out of silver at that point. So look along the edge of the coin for a mark. Um, you mean uh, this one's they said it was not a coin. It was a medallion. But um, so it doesn't have like the ridges there. But do you mean around the edge here? Oh, thank you. It's one of those ones I've had for a little while. Let me see. It's a smooth edge and I don't see any marks. Yeah, I don't see any marks. The artist marked it down at the bottom. G. Deveris. I mean, it, it's got to be at least silver plated because of the tarnish. I think it said it was silver plated, but I don't know if they made any of them in actual sterling. Like I said, that really would make too much sense, though, if they were trying to save money. But it's cool. It's cool. That's where it's marked a lot of the time. The patina looks at least plated. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I think it's just plated, but it's not magnetic. So whatever the other metals are in it aren't magnetic either. So yeah, let me um I've, I've had these on since we got <laughs> I'm like, maybe it'll help. Because my thumbs do start to hurt me. But I think to keep the resistance on there, I'm gonna have to take out some of those links so that I can keep it against there but I like wearing them for some reason I was walking around Hobby Lobby with them on I was just waiting for somebody to say what's that let me see I'll grab that um starfish to it too though because I found a silver tone starfish so what y'all got going on today anybody from YouTube had a video coming up today, this evening, tonight. Anybody want to shout out anything they've got going on? Ouch. How's your sales going? I've had here and there Etsy and Poshmark. Um, it'll be dry for a minute. And then uh, actually, I think I'm going to add 
I'm gonna add this one that opal opalescent glass. And I was thinking about adding that starfish on there. And then there's a piece of mother of pearl too that I can add to it. Here goes nothing, guys. So this is the charm necklace that I made. I used uh, freshwater pearls, all glass beads and crystals, and a uh, real shell, real mother of pearl. Um, I don't know what that gemstone is unless it's like sodalite, but it is a real stone. And then I used some abalone right there as her, that's a mermaid in the middle if that, if that makes any sense to y'all. It's a mermaid. I use a pearl for her head, and that's her body, and that's her tail. And then I gave her some hair with those. <laughs> so anyway, this is what it would look like. It'd be one of those big, glitzy um, charm necklaces. And these are the matching earrings right here. I use glass cat's eye. And those are faceted uh, glass, and these are freshwater pearls or something, or like the doublet pearls where they stick them together like that, or however they do it. But yep, and that's what those look like. So y'all think those are sellable? Do you think that that's, that would do okay? I named it Sea Goddess. That's what I named that one. That's me from Salvation Army, so that video from me is new. Okay, cool. I'll check that out, Angie. Doing listings. Listings have picked up for me. Yeah, this week, I think it was this week or was it last week? Yeah, last week and a little bit this week. I had sales when I had been dry for a couple of weeks. You like it? Lovely, lovely. Okay, cool. Well, I will definitely try to list it or either, you know, if y'all are, if anybody's ever interested in it, I could always make some things and Put them in an auction like that but i'm i'm pulling from all my really nice uh beads and stuff and uh, gemstones and things like that to make some some good quality nice uh fashion pieces with like semi like i said semi-precious stones glass beads real pearls things like that so that's the first one um, I have some components set aside to do an oriental one. It's called the Geisha, which is going to be for Casey. I don't, I mean, it, it's just in, in remembrance of Casey or in, in thought for Casey, unless he says he wants it and <laughs> he can buy it from me. And then there's another one, the one I'm working on that I needed the gold um, findings for is my Cleopatra necklace that I'm doing. And then I think I had one other... Oh, cherry berry is probably not in here, but I'm, I'm doing a cherry themed. I had some really pretty red glass beads. Um, so I was going to, and they look like they'd be perfect to make like little dangly cherries or something. So I might either do just earrings or earrings and a necklace or earrings and a bracelet or something like that. But I've been having fun with it lately. I felt creative and, and I felt like, you know, doing that stuff. And I've got so much stuff. So much stuff but really guys uh, me and Cindy are gonna take my Monday night this coming up Monday for my jewelry auction and we're gonna do if she's still in the chat she could talk about it too we're gonna do um, are we doing it oh goodness we're either doing a, okay Cindy are you still there because I think I just had a brain malfunction yeah, yeah, and then I'm going to try to, uh, I had found some in some of my beads, those little molded glass leaves, so I want to use some of those in it. It's silver over bronze. Okay, cool. Thank you. You looked it up, Peyton. Did I show you all that? There's different configurations, so you can cross the chain and wear it that way. You can wear it that way. And like I said, I moved it over and put it on another finger. It'll fit over another finger. I don't know if it'd work in the same way for another finger. Craft sale. Okay, Monday. Monday, we're uh, doing the craft sale. So if y'all are looking for components and things like that, and I'm going to make, like I said, I'm going to make some more of those little do-it-yourself kits and stuff and probably just start them at like, maybe even buy it now $5 for um, 
some of them, but where I just put things together that are themed. Like I have one that was put together last night. That's like uh, red, white, and blue stars. And I put some, made sure I put some glass beads in there that were red, white, blue, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, a lot of times I find just chains. So I was going to put, add in a, you know, the bracelet will be there. You'll have most everything you need. You might need like the jump rings to attach it and that kind of thing. But yeah, you could totally use it at, or give it to to a little girl that likes to make jewelry or you could do it yourself. And I'm always interested in y'all sharing, you know, what you make and, and things like that with us because I'd love to see it and get more ideas and and see what sells for everybody and what's popular. I mean, I'm always looking online, but right now Joanne's has great coupons, 40% off beads too. Cool. Yeah, Joanne's too then. They're, they did 50% off on, on all that stuff that I got at Hobby Lobby today. And then I always go and check the clearance uh, section every time I'm there. <laughs> but we are, do, Cindy, do you want me to tell them about the other sale that we plan on doing before the end of the month? Hey, Bianca. And I need to get back over on Glam Squad because I've got lots and lots and lots and lots of clothes to get rid of. <laughs> okay yeah so next monday night instead of cindy doing a jewelry auction it'll be me and her again so that you'll get both of us this monday and next monday and this monday on mine it's going to be your craft um sale for your beads and and sewing needs and things like that and then, and even if, if Cindy has it, I don't know if I have any more like stampers and things like that. Um, and then next Monday, we'll be on Cindy's channel for her Monday night. We're going to do Christmas in July. So if you're already starting to think about what you want to decorate, you know, with or items that you want to buy Christmas related, then check us out. Because I've got brand new like kitchen towels and wash rags and uh, hand towels that are all Christmas um, and cute. And they're even good for crafting because some of them I picked up because I thought they would be really cute to make those teddy bears out of. Because, you know, they're like terry cloth sort of material and then had like pastel-y Christmas trees and stuff all over them. So they, they were really cute. And we'll have like Christmas jewelry, um, you know, just any kind of Christmas ornaments. I've got Christmas ornaments. It's going to be all kinds of stuff. Christmas. If you have any requests, go ahead and put them in the chat because, you know, I'll dig it out if I have it. <laughs> if I have some more, like, particular Christmas things, I'll look. Vintage. Me too, Peyton. Oh, my gosh. When it comes to Christmas, and, like, Anita had us do a video last year of our Christmas tree. This time, I'm going to do um, a Christmas ornament video. And I will show you my vintage ornament collection that I built up. And then uh, Tyrone recently got me a nice Swarovski um, from the thrift store ornament that's going to go on my tree this year. Yeah, shiny, bright, sparkly. It you know, catches my attention, too. Yeah, I'd like to see what you have, too. Maybe you can share it on Facebook or something. Show us your Christ vintage Christmas ornament collection. I've got some Coca-Cola ornaments that were supposed to get sold on eBay and they never did. So if you know anybody that's into Coca-Cola, you'd be wanting to get them something Coca-Cola or whatever for Christmas. I'm going to have some Coca-Cola ornaments and things. <laughs> Cindy says she hoards her shiny bright items. And I know I've got to get on here and actually show. Um, oh, did I tell y'all that these were K Kenneth J. Lane? They, these are Kenneth. I don't know if I said that. Those. Um, but I do want to get on here and do some things like with these necklaces and things that I'm making. So maybe I can show y'all kind of what I do if anybody is interested in the process of that. Um, if I get to sewing these bears and can figure all that out, uh, I want to share some of that with you. I know that surprises. 
<laughs> um, and I'm going to keep making my bougie bears till one day they catch on and people like them. <laughs> but yeah, I want to, I want to get more into some more videos of, um, how to's and, and things like that. If y'all have any ideas of things y'all want to, to see me do or, um, things, even if I don't know how to do it, if it's something you want to try together and us learn together, just give me a suggestion in the comments below and I will do some research and, uh, you know, we'll try it. We'll try whatever it is as long as it's not too crazy. <laughs> Need some more ideas. Because I know you don't see me and what I'm doing most of the time, but generally I'm either cleaning house, starting up some new project, either outside or with something to sell, or um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm busy doing stuff. I need to list more, that's for sure. But I got create in this creative mode, and if you could see my dining room table where I'm sitting at right now, you would see it looks like um, it looks like a hot mess. <laughs> that's what it looks like. So no suggestions, no anything that people want to learn how to make or anything like that. Was I talking to you? <laughs> and now, Bolo, keep your eye out for corrective jewelry. There's rings, too, and if they still have them tomorrow, I think I said that. I'm going to go back and see. But they go, they're bands that are connected at the bottom under here for support at the joint. But then they, they wrap around here and here, but you can still flex your knuckle. And I might get those because I know that they're sterling and I know that they're probably uh, resellable for a good price too. They didn't fit my finger, so I wouldn't be able to use them. But I'm either, oh yeah, or I'm talking to you. Yeah. Well, I'm usually talking to you while I'm doing something though. That's how that works the kits and what you can make from them awesome yeah maybe maybe what i'll do is i'll um schedule it where i have my little kit already set up and um you know i'm not at a thousand subscribers so i can't mobily do anything i can pre-record but i want to pre-record i want to do something live i like interacting with people i mean i do want to pre-record some things eventually but uh yeah, I'm not the editing queen by no means. But I could sit down with that and have um, probably just break, I could set my phone on the tripod and and link it to my um, video. And then y'all can see what I'm doing and see me at the same time. And then we can sit there and craft together. But don't forget to to put your name down if you want me to send first 10 people. That's what we're going to do. First 10 people to to put their name down will will get a um will get a kit from me that wants to participate in that challenge. <clears throat> I've been wear, wanting to glitter a branch, hang it in my living room and hang beautiful things like Christmas. Sounds like fun. There was some Pinterest, I was on Pinterest hard the other day and there was some Pinterest idea um with a uh, the petrified, uh, petrified wood that I was looking at. But yeah, that sounds like fun. Okay, so yeah, I still have all those plans to, you know, eventually I'm going to move. Tyrone will keep the house here. I will move um, to the whatever property I can find. I searched out a piece of property. I have a piece of property in mind if it's still there once I reach. Hey, Casey. Um, once I reach my my goal um if it's still there then i'm going to purchase the land first and it's over in pine mountain georgia uh, one of the areas i grew up when i was a kid and it's real real lovely if you search like callaway gardens it's where callaway gardens is in georgia and you'll see you can see get an idea of what it's like there it's very rural area and really nice um kind of a tourist i guess attraction because of callaway gardens but yeah, I'll get the land first and I found, okay, so there's the yurt that's going to be like 20, rough, let's say roughly like 25,000 for a yurt. Then I have to insulate it, put up paneling, divide areas, 
maybe build a, yeah, I'd have to build the deck and all that kind of stuff. Or there's a place in my hometown of LaGrange that actually does, um, they build the uh, tiny homes on wheels. So they will get the trailer and then they do, uh, I think it's steel framing. They'll still frame it. They'll build the whole thing, maybe even do the inside work for you. And I was looking at some of their pricing. It could be a cheaper option. And then it's mobile. So I could just trade my car in, have a truck. And if I wanted to go vacation or if I want to do like what I eventually hope to do, and hopefully Casey will come with me, is travel around and uh, visit other YouTubers and make videos with them. So that would fit a dual purpose. But I think if I did the tiny home, I would probably still want the yurt because I still like the round circular um, shape. But yeah, it's just I'm saving up right now. Every time I do these auctions, every time um, I do it, well, I miss my MSP because I had like a panic attack or something. It was crazy. I, I don't know. There was a lot of things going on in the background that happened that, that particular day. And then I was just stressed out. So um, I, I wasn't feeling well. I had to go lay down. But yeah, if I had done the MSP, that would have put me closer to to my goal for getting to the money I need for the land. I will. I definitely will, Angie. I still will. Yeah, um, I'm going to trade my car in soon for a truck eventually anyway. Hopefully, um, if not before Christmas, after Christmas, uh, I've got to, got to get the recalls done on it. Um, but that doesn't cost me anything. They have to do that at the auto dealership. But yeah, and the mileage is getting high on it because I've traveled with it so much and everything. So I should be able to get me a nice truck if I trade that in and throw a couple thousand with it. Something I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, Peyton. That's what I'm saying. Like, just it would be so much fun to just hook up, drive to wherever you wanted to. You know, you're you're working, you can I can make the videos with y'all like this. I can make my jewelry or sell my jewelry. Um, the only thing with traveling with it, though, is storage. So there's also another option for making a home yourself. And a lot of people are using those uh, shipping containers. And there you can get one for like $2,000. You go inside, you cut your doors, windows out, and you insulate. Excuse me. You insulate and you put up like paneling. Or, or, yeah, paneling and stuff like that, or drywall, however you want to do it, on the inside, and boom, bam, do some electrical work and some plumbing, and you've got a house. So I'm thinking that's probably on my property. I would build that to be a workshop. That would be where all my reseller supplies, um, I want a table where I can create and make things and, you know, do all that and and probably as much of it as I feel like I can handle myself. I want a homestead, have my garden, um, have some maybe a goat or two because I've, I've been promising JJ that we can have a goat and uh, you know just see what I can do by myself, what I can get done and and I used to make soap like how uh, Darlene makes soap, so I'd probably go back to to making my own soap and I make. I make a lot of things like that myself, like my cleaning supplies from just natural products and vinegar and things like that. Let's see. Give me the VIN gives the great prices on buying used trucks. Okay, thanks, Swamp Picker. I'll check that out. I'm not the best at knowing, you know, <clears throat> how to buy things. I've taken my cousins. They know about working on trucks and cars and stuff and get them to check things out. I know even though I've never met them in person, I know they're awesome. <laughs> oh, you're talking about um, Dwayne and Heather. Yeah, that's so much fun. Every time Dwayne says he's got um, a thing here in Georgia, they always cancel it on him. It's been like twice that he planned on coming down here. and We were going to meet up with him, but they canceled his uh, his little work event thing. So, yeah. 
Um, it's going to be a while out before y'all see any action on the um, on my little my little piece of heaven or whatever I want to call it. I don't know what I'm going to call it. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, you just got to give me time to save up because this the property that I'm looking at. They're wanting roughly um, a little over seven thousand for it, and I'm going to see if I came in with cash in hand. And it's only like a hair over an acre. Um, if I came cash in hand, if they would just give it to me for about five, that'll give me somewhere to start. So then I could take y'all out there and show you my process of creating a driveway. Cause this is, <clears throat> this is just rough piece of land, creating a driveway and clearing out, you know, the space for my home and all that kind of thing. Tyrone said to me today, why don't you start building your tiny home in the backyard? But, it gets flooded and real marshy and wet back there. I don't know if that'd be a good idea. I don't think I'm going to be able to build the framing and all that myself anyway. That's why I think the one in LaGrange would be the best because they, they can quickly put it up with the steel and frame it. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Oh, definitely. Whatever I get to doing, I will share. If y'all want to see me, <laughs> if y'all want to see me landscape my front yard tomorrow, if I can do that, I'll put you out there. <clears throat> um, crunchy, into natural stuff, homestead. Oh, I'm crunchy. I didn't even know what that meant. Look at Cindy. See, me and Cindy both, we love watching those videos on how to go, you know, go tiny or do van build outs. People live in their vans and travel in their vans. They turn the school buses into conversions. And Take those on road trips. We watch that kind of stuff all the time. I'm all about it. Number one, I don't have a huge house to clean. Number two, my utilities are going to be minimal. Number three, that means I can go and do and save a lot more money. I'm just all about it. I'm at that point where I don't want to just be stuck in the house all the time. I mean, I've got to work from somewhere, but I can take my laptop and list a few things from wherever I want to go for real. And I just love gardening and, and stuff like that. And I, I love the feel of, you know, growing your own food, knowing where it came from. I've had enough health problems that I feel like are related to things that I've ate and the way I feel, I know when I eat more naturally and I eat more, I want to see if I can stop eating meat. I love meat, but <clears throat> meat's harsh on, on my system and the way that they raise some of this uh, cattle and stuff is not so great, but I just like how I feel when I eat organic vegetables. Yeah, Cindy's dehydrating tomatoes. I told her I got to go get some Granny Smith apples and put them in my dehydrator over there. That's what that is. That's my dehydrator. If y'all see my kitchen's kind of, it's a. this is what my kitchen looks like because we did that ourselves. We remodeled the kitchen and did the open shelving. We used the, um, the that was a Pinterest thing. <laughs> we used those steel pipes. Uh, there we go. We used the steel pipes um, to support the, the wood and we stained the wood and lacquered it and everything ourselves. Now we need to redo the countertops. We're going to try those cement countertops that you can pour and uh, stain and you can give it a texture and make it look like marble. And we were going to try those and then um, told him we could build us a little, I want a little island that has wheels so I can just push it over to the side over there. But yeah, just some little things. This house needs to be renovated because when we bought it, it needed some work to it. So if he ever decides to sell it, then that way he can get a little profit out, out of it. We need to do the staircase too. Got to go to Arby's, bouncing out. Okay, bye Angie, be careful. You like open shelving? Yeah, I don't mind it except the only thing is, is it gets dusty. So if you get a plate down, you know, like it, it, when my cabinets, I just take the plate down and throw some food on there. But for this, I'm going to take the plate down and I'm going to rinse it off if it's a hot plate because it's going to have a little layer of dust on it. But I can see everything I need. Plus, you can see my milk glass and stuff like that that I collect. So I like to be able to see all of that. 
So, and I've, I've used um, a lot of vintage stuff in there, all kinds of vintage stuff. So I like to be able to see it. And it, it gave us a lot more space. I mean, these cabinets that were in here were so small, it was just a waste of space. But all right, guys, don't forget, if you want to participate in the uh, craft challenge, you want me to send you the bag with everything you need to, to make a piece of jewelry, then let me know, and I will. And I will, if I know a little bit about you, I'll try to pick something that might appeal to your taste. But if I don't, um, I'll still make, you know, put something together that I think looks good. <laughs> You could do artwork in your dust. <laughs> well, when we moved the bedroom around the other day, um, I kind of felt that way about the bay window in our bedroom on the window sills was like shameful. <laughs> you do mini milk glass collection. Yeah, I, I guess I'd call mine mini. I mean, I'll probably have about 15 pieces, I guess. So Peyton wants one. I got you for sure, but I'll have to write it down because my memory is awful. That's why I said just comment below, but I think I can remember Peyton. I might even just go below and type your name in myself so I won't forget. The room looks also more open and airy. It does, yeah. This is the tiniest kitchen for a two-story, four-bedroom home that I've ever seen, but it feels like there was a little bit of well, this was a this was a back porch where I'm sitting now that has been enclosed into a sunroom. And when you walk through over there through our kitchen, it goes into a tiny little living room that's off of the garage. And then there's a room off of that that looks like it was used as like an office space. They did some remodeling or whatever. And but this is just tiny, tiny, tiny for for such a, a large house. So we had to do something. And like I said, the island would give me more counter space because I don't have a whole lot of counter space. It'd give me more counter space. And then I could just, there's a space between the refrigerator that you can't see back here um, and the other doorway that I could just slide that up against it. And I have a hanging pot rack, but I want to hang over it too and just hang my pots and pans and stuff on there. All right. So looks like we've covered everything today so yeah get those into me and i'll get those out to y'all as soon as i can and we'll see what we can create you know what since it would take so long to list it and actually see what well, i want us to list it because i want to see what we can make off of it but um when we do it i'll wait and make sure everybody's had time to get their uh craft bag that i send them and then we'll, um, I'll schedule it in advance, maybe a week ahead for the video. And uh, that way y'all will get the notification and you'll know um, when you're gonna, uh, when we're gonna do it. But then we'll, we'll do it live together. I mean, if you wanna join me in the video, you can, but if you wanna watch and as we're, uh, as, I, as I'm doing it and I'm on camera, y'all can work on yours too. Yeah, we could do that together and craft it together. And then I, that way we'd have the chat to ask questions or if we need help with something or whatever. You like tiny kitchens. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see everybody later. I appreciate y'all joining me. And if you hadn't hit the thumbs up, uh, thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you want to send somebody my way and help me grow my subscribers, I appreciate it. Bye, everybody. See you Monday.